3,200 years of history stand behind one of China's most important provinces, Henan. It's a cradle of Chinese civilization and up to 1,000 years ago it was the cultural and political heart of China. There's no way you can skip Henan if you're interested in Chinese culture. With a population just shy of 100 million, Henan is a crowded place to say the least. If it were a country on its own, it would be the 15th most populous, but even as a subnational division, it ranks a not too shabby 7th place worldwide. The roaring economy of Henan produces a GDP larger than Turkey's, so there's a lot of activity going on around here. Unlike other regions in China, Henan is anything but diverse. 99% of the people identify as Han Chinese. Which should come as no surprise, since this province is part of the birthplace of the Han Chinese civilization, in other words, this is an ancient homeland of theirs. There's so much more to discuss and present about Henan, but as usual, we start at the beginning. So let's dig around the history of Henan. To talk about Henan's history means to go back, way back in time where history and legend combine. Sometime in the 21st century BC, the first Chinese dynasty, the Xia, was established by Yu the Great in what is now North and Central Henan. Although the many stories of this early kingdom abound to this day, much of what we know can be categorized as legends. That being said, these legends do have their roots in reality. Probably. Yu's dynasty ended in the 16th century BC when the Shang, led by Cheng Tang, took over. Most of their many capitals were in Henan, but the last one, Yin, became pretty important. It was in this city that the first Chinese writing system was created, the so-called Oracle Bone Script. Their legacy lives on to this day, but their kingdom lasted only five centuries. In the 11th century BC, the Zhu dynasty came in from the west and moved the capital out of Henan. But in 722 BC, they were invaded by nomadic barbarians and the political center moved back to Henan. This marked a period of warfare when Henan and all of China was divided into small independent states, all fighting for control of the central plains. Welcome to the spring and autumn period. This was, by the way, the era when Laozi, the founder of Taoism, was born in Henan. Eventually, seven large states formed that of course continued to battle each other, ushering in the Warring States period. After 800 years of wars, Qin Shi Huang crowned himself as the first emperor and conquered all of China, realizing the first unification, thus bringing the core of the Han Chinese under his rule for the first time. The centuries to come saw China parted and reunified many times and the capital moved in and out of Henan more than once. One of these capitals in Henan, Luoyang, was at one point one of the largest and most prosperous cities in the world, as was the province itself. Gradually, the center of Chinese culture and economy moved away from Henan, although it remained important all the way up to China's last dynasty, the Qing. One of the worst periods in Henan's history was in much more recent times. During the Second Sino-Japanese War, part of World War II, Henan was under heavy attacks and, out of despair, Chiang Kai-shek, leader of the Republic of China, ordered the bombing of the Huayangku Dam in Henan to prevent the Japanese from advancing. The floodings that followed killed some 900,000 Chinese and affected 12 million others. Then, in 1942, a combination of the devastations caused by the war, the provoked flooding, severe drought and a locust invasion caused a massive famine that killed some 700,000 people in Henan. After the communists took power, Henan was again hit by famines in the 1960s due to the country's new policies and this time millions died. In 1975, Typhoon Nina hit Henan and 62 dams failed, killing some 200,000 people. As a result, Henan's days of prosperity were long forgotten by this time and the province became one of the poorest of the nation. It was Deng Xiaoping who initiated a reform of the Chinese economy that opened up the country in the 80s and put it on the path it's on today. The economic boom reached Henan in the 90s and it didn't really slow down to this day, leaving the hardships of Henan's past behind. Henan's capital city is Zhengzhou. 
This city of nearly 13 million was the site of several historic settlements starting from 1600 BC, including the capitals of the Shang dynasty, Bo and Ao. This really is an ancient city of China, so of course it's filled to the brim with ruins, ancient sites, museums, cultural heritage sites, plus of course all the modern attractions one could expect. Today, Zhengzhou is a megacity in the making with a population estimated to reach 18 million by 2035. The main reason being that Zhengzhou is a mega transportation, economic and scientific hub of China. Whether you want to get acquainted with China's ancient past, study or spend money and time in one of Zhengzhou's many chic commercial streets, there is no shortage of attractions here. Here's a fact you'll probably enjoy. Shaolin Kung Fu originated from the Shaolin Temple, which lies at the foot of the Wuru Peak in the province of Henan. According to legend, the famous Shaolin Temple was established in 527 AD to accommodate Bodhidharma, an Indian master who came to China to spread Buddhism. He spent nine years there meditating, thus initiating the Chinese Chan tradition of Buddhism. To this very day, Chan Buddhism, martial arts, Buddhist art and traditional Chinese medicine are the pillars of the monastery's community and had become one of the distinctive symbols of Chinese culture throughout the world. The monks of Shaolin devote their time to researching, creating and perfecting one of the world's most famous martial arts, Shaolin Kung Fu. While this combat style is not the first form of martial arts, it is one of the oldest. 1500 years ago, the first disciples of the temple were already exceptionally skilled in martial arts and they were the first to create this unique and incredibly effective combat style. It combines balance, flexibility and meditation to produce some of the most beautiful and deadliest things humans can do. It's hard to describe what Shaolin Kung Fu is or what it looks like, but I'm sure you've seen plenty of movies that give you a hint of an idea of just how incredible Shaolin Kung Fu is. Speaking of Buddhism, this religion left a great impression on Chinese culture and a lot of landmarks. In Henan, none is more spectacular than the Longmen Grottoes. Buddhist monks began carving these grottoes starting from 493 AD and what they created is truly unequaled. These caves hold some of the finest examples of Chinese Buddhist art in the world and there's plenty to see. The Longmen Grottoes hold not thousands but up to 100,000 statues of Gautama Buddha, founder of Buddhism and his disciples. These statues are spread between more than 2300 caves and are accompanied by thousands of steles and inscriptions and more than 60 pagodas. This entire site has been designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site and is described as an outstanding manifestation of human artistic creativity. Need I say more? The Shaolin Temple and its history is already an incredible thing to explore but that's not all you'll get. On the west side of the temple you'll find another awesome piece of history, the Pagoda Forest. This is the largest collection of pagodas in China, numbering some 240 towers. By the way, if you don't know what a pagoda is, it's a tiered tower, built for religious purposes most common in Buddhism and Taoism. The Pagoda Forest of the Shaolin Temple is actually a cemetery of sorts. After monks pass away, their ashes and bones are put on a ground and a pagoda is built over it. The size, height and number of tiers are determined by the monks' attainments, prestige and merit. The first pagodas were built in 791 AD and since then this quote-unquote forest extended to cover an area of over 14,000 square meters. Chinese pagodas are an undeniable representative of Chinese architecture, so this place is truly an architectural and historic treasure trove. Throughout the many thousands of years, China and the various Chinese states that have existed had many capitals, and I do mean many. But some of them became more significant than others. There are various lists of a number of important ancient capitals, but the most comprehensive is the so-called Eight Ancient Capitals of China. Out of those eight, half are in Henan. Luoyang's legendary beginning started under the Xia dynasty in 2070 BC. It bore many names and had been a Chinese capital on and off, but it survived to this day despite all odds. The city of 15 million isn't just considered, it actually is one of the cradles of Chinese civilization, a place where it all began. 
Anyang was established in 2000 BC, at least according to ancient tales and legends, although the site had been inhabited since the Stone Age. We do know for sure that King Panggang of the Shang Dynasty established Yin on the grounds of the modern city in the 14th century BC. That city would become the first stable capital of China and the dynasty that founded it would also be known as the Yin. Kaifeng was built in 364 BC and rebuilt many times over since then. It was once a city of music, art and splendid gardens but was destroyed several times by invaders. Even so, it was a Chinese capital eight times since its establishment. And lastly, Zhengzhou, the modern capital of Henan, was also a capital of China since times immemorial. Evidence of settlements from as early as 1600 BC had been found, and the Shang dynasty built one of their capitals here, the city of Ao. So, in conclusion, Chinese history revolves around Henan, and there is no way to understand their culture without this province. And that was all for this episode, I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe before you leave. Leave your comments downstairs and if you wish to do so, you can help out this channel through my Patreon page. I do hope to see you next time, bye.